Hi everybody, this is Andy Hale, director of the Asheville School of Wine and baked ziti enthusiast. I'm here today to talk about cellaring your wines. This is kind of cellaring part two. So in our last uh, video, we talked about which wines can be cellared and why you would want to spend uh, 10 years of your life with a bottle of wine uh, perfectly drinkable in your basement. So uh, cellaring might sound like something that is very expensive, that has to be you know, spend several thousand dollars building, building out a whole room, climate controlled. Sure, if you've got uh, unlimited budget, that works great, uh, but there are lots of better ways to do it on a good budget. So the basics of building a cellar, you need to have several things. So the wine, first of all, needs to be on its side. So this keeps the cork wet and keeps it from drying out. Why we are still using corks uh, for storing our wine, it's like a medieval practice, but we're still doing it uh, to, to this day. Um, but that's one important part. Uh, secondly, it also needs to be kept in the dark. Nothing will destroy a good bottle of wine like sunlight, so don't keep it out on your windowsill. Um, and then finally, keep the temperature consistent. Ideally, you'd like to have it about 55 degrees. This will keep the wine together, allow it to age slowly uh, as time goes on. Um, up to about 60 is probably pretty good as well. Ideally, keep it under 70 though. Above 70 is not ideal. So um, if you have your temperature, your thermostat set at 75 in your house, maybe you need to find a cooler place to put your wine. Now, all of this is for storing wine long term. So I'm talking three, five, 10, even 20 years. Um, if you're drinking it this weekend or in two months, three months, don't worry about any of this. You can leave it on your counter, put it any place you like. It doesn't have to be on its side. It's not gonna go bad. Wine's pretty tough, but for it to last five or 10 years, you need to do some special things. So there are lots of ways to do this on a budget. Ideally, if you can afford it, a wine fridge, a temperature controlled uh, wine fridge could be a great way to go. Um, here's a picture of mine. Um, no big deal, uh, but uh, they're fantastic. Uh, mine has a spot for whites as well as for reds, and it uh, has the correct amount of humidity, which keeps the uh, bottles or the, the corks moist as well. And you can actually dial in different temperatures for reds and for whites. If you can't afford a several thousand dollar wine fridge, you are not alone. Uh, there are lots of other great ways to do this. Um, if you actually have a cool spot in your basement, like I do, go back to the traditional way and use your cellar for cellaring. Uh, literally, uh, just find a spot in your basement um, that is, uh, you know, away from sunlight and um, uh, just make sure the bottles are on their side. Cellars are perfect uh, for keeping wine in that consistent uh, temperature zone. Um, mine is pretty much 60 degrees just about uh, uh, all the time. Yeah, year round and yeah, it's nice and dark. Um, it's slightly humid, which is kind of perfect uh, for the bottles as well. And um, it's just kind of ideal for, for storing wine long term. If you don't have access to a basement, uh, buy an inexpensive wine rack. This is one that I used to use uh, all the time before uh, I set up my own cellar and I've aged bottles for 10 years on it and it, it did great. Uh, keeps the bottles on its side and um, yeah, just find a nice cool spot away from sunlight. Other spots in your house could be uh, in a cabinet, under your bed, uh, under the stairs, uh, someplace that's dark and has a consistent temperature will be ideal. Um, just make sure that the bottles are on their side and you should be good to go. I've actually heard of people using PVC pipes and sawing them in little um, small segments and you can actually put the bottles in there and stack them up that way. Sounds pretty cool. All right, here's some other things to think about when you're cellaring your wine. Uh, first of all, if you have a bottle of wine in your cellar for a long time, um, there may develop, mold may develop all over the outside of it. Don't worry about that. That's not a bad thing necessarily, and it's a common occurrence with older bottles of wine. So wash off the mold from the bottle before you serve it, unless you want to show off the fact that you have a cellar, and this is a really old bottle of wine, and that you're basically French aristocracy. Also, 
Uh, you may notice drippage coming out of the uh, end of the bottle after you take the foil off. This is relatively common as well. It's not ideal. It could be an indicator that maybe the humidity isn't high enough uh, to keep the um, uh, cork from, from shrinking and drying up. But it doesn't necessarily mean the wine has gone bad. Um, pop it open and taste it. It definitely means that liquid has gotten out, but it doesn't necessarily mean that air has gotten in. Keep that in mind. Once you take off the foil from your bottle of wine that's been aging in your cellar for five or 10 years, it may be pretty scary underneath there. It may be covered in mold, black, really gross. Don't let that scare you. Pop it open, wipe it off. It's totally fine. On the subject of older wines, uh, if you have a bottle that's five or 10 years old and you pop it open and pour it, be careful with the last pour. Uh, you're probably gonna have a lot of sediment in the bottle. Uh, this is totally common. This is a natural byproduct of aging your wine. Um, either decant it through a strainer to remove the sediment or just pour really, really carefully. Oh, and one other hint that I heard uh, from a friend of mine years ago when I was talking about starting a cellar, he said, if you try a bottle of wine that you like, don't just buy one. He said, buy three at a time. That way you can watch them evolve open one immediately, open one in three years, five years, ten years, uh, buy at least three bottles of the same wine so that you can watch it evolve over time. It can be a really fun thing to do. If you're looking for wines that would be good candidates to age, keep an eye out for Metro Wine's new Cellar Club. Each month we're going to bring you a new bottle of wine that we think will age for three, five, ten years and we'll have a special pricing on each. As always, if you ever have any questions with which wines are ageable and how long, give us a call and we're, we'll be happy to help. Well, thanks for listening everyone and happy cellaring!